Hello guys and welcome back to the comment and it's time for the third part in this tutorial series and today we are going to create that you can move an object or at least we're going to script that and also we're going to add all the other variables oh I forgot to delete one here um, so the variables we're going to create them so it's a little bit more handy so that at least we've got already all of them maybe we're not going to use them probably we will it just depends on the time also um, there is another tutorial on this uh, channel about moving an UE element uh, with your mouse. Um, that's also within a playlist of this tutorial series. And you should watch that before this tutorial because we're going to use that and we're just going to copy and paste it within this script. And after that, um, then we're just I'm just going to change it a little bit uh, and I will just explain it why. But... Um, I expect that you guys already understand what it exactly does and things like that. All right, so let's add the other variables. Uh, the very first one is a public camera cam, and that's because we need to translate the screen to world point. It's something also from the other tutorial. Um, a public event system. Yes, and this is something because we need to know which button you pressed. and. For a lot of things, you um, a lot of times you can just do it a little bit differently. Uh, that you can just call it and well do things like that. But we are going to do it like this because we need the name of the object you just pressed, and that is also the ID of the slot. Um, also here we are going to add a public int current ID. So that's the ID. Um, that you're currently changing from slot a public uh, item inventory current item and this is really the item you really got by your mouse so this is from which slot and this is which item and then we also need to have of course a public rect transform moving object and this is because that's the object the UE element you are going to move around on your screen. Then also a public factor tree offset. And this is uh, to make sure that you have a little bit of an offset on your uh, UE element that you will move around. Um, There's also something that is explained in the other tutorial. So, uh, well, let's just adhere some functions. So we're going to start with the move object. We're just going to copy and paste it. And this is already a little bit changed. So just very quickly what we're going to do here. Um, let me just change this variable because otherwise it won't be right. All right, so here it just goes, uh, sees the position of your mouse and the offset. Here it changed the position of set to the same of the inventory main object. And this is to make sure that it won't get too close to the camera. And here we got that the object, dot position, we're just going to say which position it exactly is. So that's move object. That's not very hard to think. Um, and now we're going to also add, before anything else, we are going to um, do public void, public void, select object. And here we are going to do an if loop. So if your current ID is minus one, that means that your ID, um, that you currently don't have any item, so that you're not moving an item around. Then, of course, you are going to put one to your a temporary slot. We create that right here, um, here. And we're going to move it around. If it isn't, um, so else, so if you already got an item, then you're going to, well, copy and uh, paste it actually. So you're going to move those two items. Um, but before you can do this, you just cannot say that um, one item inventory is the other. And that's because if you do that, you get, well, a certain problem, you can call it like that, but um, it will have a reference to the other item. So if you change something on this temporary variable here, uh, this one, the current item, it will also be changed on the actual item. 
and that makes that well it will be uh, it won't work and that's why we are going to create another um, function which will actually copy a class and I will also create a tutorial for this uh, subject alone but let's just do it right here and now so a public item inventory and a copy inventory inventory item so here we're just going to copy it so what we're going to do is we want a variable which we want to copy to the other one so we've got an item inventory old and we got an item inventory new and this with a capital because otherwise it won't work new needs to be with a capital and that's a new inventory item um, here we're going to return it and between this we're going to copy every variable we need so new dot id is the same as old dot id and we're just going to copy and paste it and if you have more of course in this class you also need more here i think it's uh, a little bit logic so new game object is old game object new uh, health is old health and account is also so now we just copy it whenever we are going to call this function we are just going to copy uh, the inventory item so now here we got we need to know the current id so the current id that is the same as the the name of the button you just pressed but you cannot send the name of your own button well we can do that but that's very hard so what we're going to do we have a variable called es and that's the event system and from the event system we um, can get a current selected game object so that's the button you just pressed um, because we're going to call this with uh, whenever you press a button then we're going to say what is the name so now we could like a name but this is wrong of course because this is a string and this is an int so we need to change that and you can do that with int dot parse and now we can just um, uh, now this string will be changed into an int and make sure here are only numbers in because otherwise we will get an error so the name needs to be a number and we already did that so now it will work but just keep that in mind if you want to use it somewhere else then the current item is going to be copy inventory item and from that um, so we are going to call this um, function that we want to copy something and we got a whole list of all the items there or all the slots whatever you want to call it so if you're going to call current id you will get of course the uh, right item the item you just clicked and we got a moving object and that's the object we're going to move around and we're going to say that the game object and set active is true so we're just going to enable it so you can see it because if you are moving around with your cursor without anyone anything selected you just don't want that um, it is uh, selected that that is um, visible um, also what we need to say is that from moving objects we want to get the component because it's an image and we want to say that the image and from that the sprite so that's like the visible image uh, the image you see is going to be the same as data dot items so data are the items within your data and that means that you can just get the sprite of the image and then in that you want the uh, one that is uh, current item dot id and we want to have the image so that means you got the image then 
uh, at last we actually need to add um, the item add item and what we want to do is that with the old slot we want to have there empty because there's nothing at that moment just like when you play minecraft or whatever um, so we're going to say that within the current id so that's the uh, slot you you selected we're going to say that there is going to be data dot items and zero and zero was empty uh, i don't know if i already said that but zero that means it's just empty that's nothing so of course count is zero and health is zero because it's nothing so now you are moving around it and you select null button because you want to swap those um the very first thing you're going to do is actually uh, change those two. So how you're going to do that is by first add inventory item and do that at the current ID. So current ID is still the object you selected at, at first here. And what you're going to do is, whoops, is add or actually uh, change towards that the items and from that the int dot parse so exactly the same as we did here which means the object you currently selected um so now um if you would if we wouldn't uh, add anything right now if you just clicked somewhere and you will drag it towards another spot and we just click it again you would just copy that spot that new spot um, towards the old spot. But now we also need to know, uh, need to add on the new spot, the old spot. So we're going to do that by add inventory item again. Whoops. Um, and say that int.parse, and this is still this place because this is the slot we have. And this is the right slot. So this is the slot you clicked as last. And of course the current the current item. So now we just copied everything. We want to say that the current ID is minus one. And that's because we want to make sure that uh well when the next time you click something, it will see it as current ID is zero, uh, minus one. So that means that it doesn't have anything selected. So actually we're resetting things. And then of course, moving object dot game object dot set active is false. So now we turn that off so we won't see it anymore. And that's anything to select an object. So we got now select object, we got move object. And we've got the copy inventory item and there's one last function we need to add. And then we need to add everything to the update in start because we're going to do that the next time. Um, also with creating the whole scene. But first, the last one is public void update inventory item. Uh, update inventory, I mean. I'm sorry. And... What we're going to do here is go towards each and every object. So a for loop which will go towards uh, will go to each and every object. And that for loop will change the ID and uh, will change the count. Um, and we'll just do that whenever you want to call it. Um, so int e is zero. And you want to do this, um, for example, every time you open the inventory and things like that um, to make sure that there isn't any wrong uh, things. So int i is zero. It will need to be less than max count. And you need to add one every time. So now we, what we're going to do is just uh, if items so the item you currently add so items dot i is the item you currently add isn't zero so if it isn't empty 
n and um, the items so the current item dot count is more than one okay, sorry items it means uh, that we want note want to show uh, that means that we want to show the actual count so right here um, items dot item game object dot get component in children text whoops text and from that the text so the actual string you see and we're just going to copy it so to the current one count to string and well if it isn't we are going to say that we're just going to copy this all but we're going to say that the string is empty so we're just going to add two of those and that will just show them that it is empty and also we are going to check and it's only this one if it isn't zero um, we want to uh, or every time we also want to have that the items and it's a little bit less but the get component image is the same as items i dot id so what we're going to do here is going to make sure that also the image is uh, the right one so this is the id so now we need to go towards data dot items and now we've got the right item and we only need to have the image so it also got the right image. So this means that every time you call the update inventory, it will just select the right ones. Um, also, uh, there are a few things we need to do at the end. Um, yeah, we need to do. We need to add here the at event select object. Um, so tempment dot on click. So this means. We're going to create that whenever you click it, you will do whatever we're going to say here. And on click is that list, and now we want to add a listener. And within this listener, we are going to say that it's uh, dedicated. And we're just going to say that it is going to be select object. And select object was the one we said that would uh, call this function and would so that you can select an object and this was uh, everything for today i know it's a little bit longer than normally uh, this 15 min minutes i think um, but i still hope you guys liked it if you did please leave a like or subscribe and i see you guys next time with the last part in this tutorial series and um, if you guys enjoyed the series please leave a like please leave a comment if you got any questions and i see you guys next time bye